Tonight's Digging for Old was inspired by our last story regarding Oregon's First Lady and the drama unfolding in the governor's office. We went to the Oregon Historical Society's online collection and searched for First Lady. It brought up 20 listings for us, and this political ribbon caught our attention from July 4th, 1923. Here's a closer look now. It's a reception pin with the name of the 29th president of the United States on the front, Warren G. Harding. The ribbon came up in our search because the description mentioned Harding's first lady, Florence, who traveled with him to Oregon in the summer of 1923, 101 years ago. And luckily, the Historical Society has many photos of Harding's visit, which started in Meacham, Oregon on July 3rd. Meacham is out in Umatilla County, for those of you who are not familiar, and I think there's a good number of you out there who watch us, so hello. The President and First Lady were met there with a big reception that included Oregon's governor at the time, Walter Pierce. The Hardings met with representatives from the Cayuse, Walla Walla, and Umatilla tribes, and they talked with the President about their mistreatment by the U.S. government. After those discussions, the Hardings were actually formally adopted into the Cayuse tribe. The presidential party then came west to Portland for Independence Day. The reception committee greeted the Hardings at the Multnomah Hotel, which included members of Portland's high society and is where the ribbon came from that we showed you earlier. Thousands showed up to see the president, but that's where this story takes a bit of a dark turn. For most, if not all the people in the crowd, it would be the very last time they would see Harding alive. Less than a month later, on August 2nd, 1923, while well, on the same West Coast tour that brought him to Portland, Harding died suddenly in San Francisco at the age of 57, likely from either a heart attack or a stroke. And just hours later, on the other side of the country in his home state of Vermont, Vice President Calvin Coolidge heard the news and became the nation's 30th president. How about that?